If you were trading the events of the 2019 general elections, then I'm sure one of your go-to for information and analysis of events from the elections was definitely the Situation Room. Welcome to 2019 Weekly. I am Salama Salhassan and I have with me today Mr. Clement Mwako, um, convener Nigerian Civil Society Situation Room. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, Salama, sir. All right, sir. Now, let's just know, how important was the Situation Room, you know, in the 2019 general elections? I think we did our bit. Uh, certainly there were uh, other organizations who did a lot of work on, on the elections. What we did as Situation Room was provide a platform for several organizations who are working on election issues. I agreed to convene under the platform of the Nigeria Civil Society Situation Room uh, so that while groups are doing what they're doing in their own right as their own organizations, they all come together under the platform uh, to exchange ideas, to collaborate, to work together and provide a common impetus for um, concerted action. And that's what we did on the elections, uh, pulling together the resources of uh, more than 70 Nigeria civil society groups uh, uh, to uh, make the impact that we did on the elections. And I think we made a lot of impact. Um, being able to reach out to a lot of the stakeholders, whether it is the police or INEC or um, political parties or indeed several of the other stakeholders in the elections, uh, being able to provide public advocacy on our observations of the elections, uh, being able to even intervene where we see that things um, are going wrong and try to bring the experience the influence that we have as situation room to bear on situation. So I think uh, we would say that we did um, a great job and I think a lot of Nigerians have um, made those comments as well. So we really are proud of what we did as situation room and continue to do as well. All right, um, you talked about interventions. What were one of the interventions that you actually, you know, carried out or pushed for in the 2019 elections that made a difference? I think there were a lot of criticisms of the security forces, uh, of the police, uh, but particularly of the military. But um, in, in the last uh, two weeks or three weeks before the elections, there was a change uh, in the police hierarchy. Uh, a new assistant, a new acting inspector general of police was appointed. Within a few days of his appointment, we did meet with him and continue to emphasize the same issues we had been emphasizing with the Inspector General of Police before him, uh, Idris, uh, pointing out the concerns we have about the need for the police to be non-partisan with the elections. Uh, I think that the concerns we had about the possibility of massive police partisanship pulled back uh, because we got assurances from the Inspector General of Police uh, that he would ensure that police officers were deployed for the elections uh, where name tags are identifiable and would behave in a professional manner. Uh, I wouldn't say we got it completely right with it or that he got it completely right, but I think that the fears we had were minimized. Uh, I think the biggest problem we had with elections was uh, a lot of it dealing with the military getting more involved than they had hitherto been involved in. And I think it's a major concern for elections that you would have that extent of um, involvement by the military in, in elections. All right, uh, we gather that um, the Situation Room has been in, in, in existence since 2010. Yes. Now, you were part of the 2011 election and the 2015 election. So how would you rate the experience of the just concluded election compared to you know, the two past elections? Something common ran through the three elections. One uh, was postponement. And uh, with the 2019 elections, it was postponed a few hours to opening of polls. Uh, again, um, this was a common issue. And I think that in each of these cases, uh, Situation Room uh, was very prominent in drawing attention to the challenges. Of course, the 2015 was the military specifically asking for uh, postponement of the elections. In 2011, voting had started and we found out that, that a situation room receiving reports from the field, 
that there were no materials to collate the results at the centers. And we drew our next attention to it and ANEC averted what could have been a major disaster in conducting elections without the sensitive materials needed to collate the results. And so it postponed it. Uh, in 2019, we also discovered uh, quite close to the elections and it became a stack uh, a few hours to the election that materials had not been distributed across the country. And we drew our next attention to the fact that the danger that that posed was that you would have staggered elections. Some parts of the country had received materials, some had not. And we drew our next attention to this and uh, insisted that you couldn't conduct an election in that circumstance. It would be a disaster. Um, and so INEC pulled back and postponed the elections by, by a week uh, to enable it uh, to be able to distribute materials across the country. So what could have been potentially a very, very disastrous election um, was recovered. I wouldn't say that we were satisfied with the 2019 elections. I think that when you put it side by side with the 2015 elections, uh, 2019 represented a setback and we're very disappointed because we know that INEC had worked hard, but also that INEC had given us assurances of what um, improvements it had made. So it was a major disaster, a major disappointment for us that um, the gains we thought had been made um, far and above 2019 um, far and above 2015 did not appear to have reflected uh, in the preparations for 2019. Uh, overall, we were disappointed with the elections uh, in comparative terms with 20, uh, 2015.